Hey guys, it's Charlie, and you are watching Wednesday in our Pagan Opinions. This week we are talking about um, contraceptives, basically like birth control condoms, things like that, and teenagers, and whether or not parents uh, providing their teens with those types of things encourages safe sex, or if it encourages or promotes promiscuity. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. So first I want to remind everybody that um, birth control is used for more things than just preventing birth, or preventing, I guess, pregnancy. Um, birth control is used for women or girls um, who have really heavy periods and a lot of cramping and a lot of heavy bleeding. It's also used for, um, I believe it's used to treat acne in some cases. It's used for like many different things other than just um, helping someone not get pregnant. So I just kind of want to throw that out there just kind of as a side note. But where I'm going to come from on this video, on this topic, I'll just flat out say I do not think that um, providing your teenagers with condoms or birth control or any sort of contraceptives necessarily promotes promiscuity. I think that in the worst case scenario, um, it prevents a life-changing um, mistake from happening. Not that children are mistakes, but hear me out here. So, with that being said, I do think that it's appropriate for parents to provide that, those things to their children. With that being said, that does not mean that parents can just kind of, okay, here's this stuff, um, if you need it, and just like sweep everything else under the rug. Like, proper groundwork has to be laid throughout the, the child's entire life up to that point in order for the child to really respect um, wh where the parents are coming from. If you have, there are, there are like four main um, parenting styles. The first is um, authoritarian, and that's basically because I said so. And um, extremely high standards for children and extremely low emotional um, response or emotional encouragement. There's like a high, like they hold their children to a very high standard, but at the same time, <clears throat> they don't really show um, as much like love and positive reinforcement. Then there's the authoritative, which is most child experts believe that that's the best style of parenting and that has an equal weight between accountability like the child having a sense of accountability for their actions as well as um, like the fluffy emotional um, connection between the parent and the child and um, just basically the, that positive reinforcement then there are parents who are referred to as either lenient um, they're also referred to it's the the main one that they're referred to as is Oh, I cannot remember the word, but basically it means that they give the the children what they want, everything that they want. I know so many parents who have raised children like this, and they raise entitled, spoiled brats who have zero accountability, take zero accountability in their life, and they're given all these things to keep them happy. The kids think their parents are really, really cool and everything because they get brand new cars for the 16th birthday, they get every single new electronic gadget that comes out, they get any kind of clothing that they want. The parents just give and give and give and give and give. And it's a really high level of like emotional and like love and support and things like that and positive reinforcement, but a very low, um, basically the parents have a very low, they don't hold their children up to any standards. Their, their children, basically, they're just spoiled brats and they, they grow up to be spoiled brats. And I've, ra I've worked with um, adults around my age, sometimes a little bit younger, I've actually worked with them and they're extremely difficult to work with because they never ever ever take anything, like they're never responsible for anything, it's always someone else's fault and they're never accountable for their own actions or for their own life. And I've actually worked with adults that are like in their 40s and 50s who were raised that way and they don't take accountability for their lives either and that's like the one, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people don't take accountability for their own life and for for their own actions, when it's always somebody else's fault, always somebody else to blame, never like, okay, this was me, I screwed up, or okay, yeah, I'll try doing this differently. It's always somebody else. And hands down, that is like one of my biggest pet peeves. I cannot stand people like that. So the last one is negligent parents, which are basically parents that are just kind of absent from the child's life. There's there's low accountability and low emotional and positive reinforcement. There's just They're just they're not they're not good parents basically so 
if you think about all these four main styles, um, like primary styles of child rearing, you can kind of see where all this is going. Um, a, a child coming from an authoritarian, which is because I said so, and you're going to do this and you're expected to work hard at this and you're expected to do this, but at the same time I'm not really going to coddle you, I'm not going to tell you when you're doing a good job, um, I'm basically only going to tell you when you're not doing a good job. Those types of kids, if they are given, um, with those types of kids, they have a really hard time in general going to their parents for advice, going to their parents for anything. So if, if they were to go to their parents and talk about sex or anything like that, it wouldn't really be an honest, open, two-way conversation. It would most likely just be the parents telling them, no, it's I, I don't want you having sex, just end of story. Then you have the authoritarian, I'm sorry, authoritative style of parenting, and that usually opens up a direct two-way conversation between parent and child. That is the best way, like if you are able to, it's the, it's the most difficult, the most challenging, the most time-consuming, the most invested form of parenting that there is. All the other parenting styles, honestly, I'm sorry, I think that they're all lazy. Authoritarian parents, which because I said so, that's fucking lazy. That's lazy, lazy, lazy. Parents who just give, 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 the lenient parents who let their kids do whatever they want, let them have whatever they have, fucking lazy parenting. I'm sorry for any parents out there who parent that way, it's lazy. There's, it's lazy. And obviously negligent parents, obviously also lazy. Authoritative parents, they have to, it's constantly has to be a consistent communication, consistent, um, not punishment, but um, discipline, consistent discipline, con consistent everything across the board. And it's very, it's very, um, it's difficult. And a lot of parents try to, to incorporate that style into their lives, but because it takes so much um, patience and, and work and just, mm, um, a lot of parents eventually go to one of the other parenting styles as their primary parenting styles because parents can be a mix and a blend of of all four of the parenting styles so anyway authoritative parents um those are the the types of children they are able to go to their parents with things they're able to talk openly with their parents most of the time generally this is i mean i'm generalizing here i don't usually like to generalize but in this case i, I kind of have to then with the um the lenient parenting style or the oh i wish i could remember the other word for it It basically means like that you give, that you, you give in and you, you, indulgence, indulgent, the indulgent parent. There we go. Um, or something to that effect, I think. Those types of parents, the one that kind of, you know, oh, sure, you can get that outfit. That's so cute. You can get that phone. That's adorable. You can definitely get this computer. It's, it's, it's top of the line. Oh, yeah, I'll get you a fucking brand new Ferrari for your 16th birthday because I'm a fucking idiot. Those types of parents. There's usually um, an openness between parent and child in that because there's such a high level of emotional, um, positive emotional response from that parent. So those kids in that environment are usually able to go to their parents with things. Problem is, those parents really haven't necessarily grown up all on their own. They're not able to, to be in a tough love situation that often. So that type of parent would most likely provide um, condoms or birth control or other contraceptives to their child and the message would clearly be promiscuity. Go ahead and do what you want. If you want to have sex, go ahead and have sex. That would be the message. And then with negligent parents, um, whether or not they're even giving the child condoms or whatever, or if the child is just taking them, that's a whole other story. But that could potentially promote promiscuity. Um, so authoritative parenting, if you have a conversation with your child saying, listen, talk about the birds and the bees, you talk about the birds and the bees. How do you feel about this? You know, like, what are some of the challenges that you're facing right now? I remember being your age, it's a very, very challenging time, blah, 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 blah. You open up a line of communication, and you talk to your teen about it. And you say, I understand that you have a lot of hormones. Now, here's what could happen. If you become sexually active, here's what happens. Showing them pictures of social diseases, sexually transmitted diseases, they are not pretty. If you've ever sat through a health class um, and had to look at those pictures, it's pretty disgusting. You can also um, Google some of them. It's it, They're horrible. You don't want to contract any of those diseases. Some of them, of course, are treatable. Some of them are curable. Um, but a lot of them aren't. And a lot of them are actually, I mean, the serious ones, they are with you for the rest of your life. And sometimes, if we're talking about like HIV and AIDS, that's 
definitely has the potential. There are great drugs out there right now to kind of keep um, the symptoms of that or the, the, the effects of HIV and AIDS at bay, definitely better than it was 30 years ago, but that's going to be with you for the rest of the life, and it could affect the quality of your life from there on out. So parents who are able to like share all of these things, like this is what could happen. Also, teenagers who, who want to get pregnant, I do not understand you. I, if, if you are a teenager and you want to get pregnant right now, I have absolutely no idea where, where is your head at? Where is it? I, okay. A few years ago, there were like groups of teenagers who would form packs with their little teenage girlfriends that they would all get pregnant. And now we have these shows on MTV that glamorize being a teen parent. And this sounds really bad because everyone's life is, is valuable. And every person on this planet is worthy. And when I'm saying this, I'm kind of prefacing that, that children, babies, people who are born, they don't choose to be born. So what I, what I want to say without coming across offensive, having a child when you are a teenager will, not can, it will ruin the rest of your life. It will ruin the rest of your life. And when I say ruin, I don't mean like, oh my gosh, you may as well kill yourself. I mean, any, any, like, in your 20s, that's your time to, like, completely live it up. Like, I had Nozomi too early, and she's a blessing. I absolutely love her. Obviously, I adore my daughter. But I was not ready when I had her. I mean, no parent is ever really, like, completely fully ready unless you've had children before. But it, it's too young. Your 20s are the times when, like, your, your teens and your 20s, that's the time when you're supposed to be finding yourself and, like, doing fun things. Because otherwise what happens, you have kids and now you're a child raising a child and, and it's it's just messy situation. So anyway, if kids are having sex, basically parents need to have a respectful like okay, let me try to get my thoughts together. Parents need to be respected by their children. And authoritarian parents don't do that because I said so high accountability, low emotional those parents have respect from their children. They also have fear from their children. Authoritative, which is, let's sit down and talk about this. I expect you to behave this way. And at the same time, I show that I appreciate certain things that you do. And there's, there's like an equal level of accountability as well as emotion. Those children respect their parents. Children who come from indulgent parents, they like their parents there is less of a level of respect. And there's going to be kids out there who say, my parents give me everything and I love them and I, I totally respect them. Um, that is not the role of a parent, to just give you everything that you want and let you do whatever you want. That is not the role of a parent. That's a role of a friend. Maybe a role of a grandparent to be able to spoil you. That's not a role of a parent. That is not what your parent's job is to do. Um, so as you get older, you will... Someone who respects their parents will not do something that would be shameful. And if they did, somebody's texting me right now, if they did, they would, they would feel remorse about it. If you are going out and doing things behind your parents' backs, that is showing a huge level of, of disrespect for your parents. And so if you do that without showing any form of remorse whatsoever, you don't respect your parents. Last one, negligence. Obviously, there's no respect there whatsoever. That, I think that kind of goes without saying. So, anyway, back where I was, if there's an open level of communication, I believe that condoms, contraceptives, birth control, whatever, can be provided to teenagers without promoting promiscuity. However, the parents have to make sure that they set expectations for the child. I'm, I'm providing you with these things because here's what could happen if you don't use them. And honestly, like, girls, if you're on birth control and you're out having sex without condoms, that's just stupid. You should probably be also using condoms because birth control doesn't doesn't protect against HIV. It doesn't protect against herpes. It doesn't protect it against genital warts. It doesn't protect against chlamydia, gonorrhea, none of that. Syphilis, none of that. It doesn't protect against that. You need to be wearing condoms or your male partner needs to be wearing condoms. So if a parent says, you know, I don't expect you to do this because I showed you this is what happens and these are the risks and this is what could happen and this is how it's going to affect you in the long run, and have an open dialogue with 
your teenager. This is obviously directed at parents. Having an open dialogue with your teenager. And I'm not saying this based on experience of raising a teen, because obviously Nozomi's only three years old. I'm saying this based on experience of having seen my two younger teenage brothers be raised, as well as myself being raised, as well as just common sense. I don't know. At the same point, though, there has to be a level of, if you do decide to have sex, these are available to you, and I want you to use them. I'm telling you right now, my expectation is that you will not become sexually active until you are emotionally prepared to handle the consequences of being sexually active. But if something happens, here you go. The same thing with like drinking. I, I have the same thoughts about drinking. Parents' expectation, I expect that you do not underage drink. Here are the things that will happen. If you want to go into the military, if you want to get your license, if you have any of that shit on your record, that's going to put kind of a little bit of a wrinkle in your plans going to college, things like that, like that all affects everything. Like kids, kids are so in the moment and so like right here, right now that they don't really think about the future, but that all, that all affects the future. So parents need to be able to say, I expect that you're not going to be drinking. I'm going to be extremely disappointed if I find out that you've been drinking underage. However, in the event that for some reason you end up drinking or your friends end up drinking or something happens and you need a safe ride, I would rather you call me at three o'clock in the morning to come pick you up then drive home with someone drunk or drive home yourself drunk or buzzed or even whatever. So it needs to be said, like, these are my expectations. I'm letting you know I'm going to be severely disappointed in you if this happens. However, I will always love you and you're my child and I want what's best for you. So in the event that this happens, here are these condoms. In the event that this happens, you know my number to call me for a safe ride, things like that. So there has to be an equal, basically in order to be able to provide that, that type of thing to um, teenagers. There has to be an equal amount of accountability that you are placing on the teenager. You're almost an adult. I expect that you're responsible enough to handle this. But there also has to be any, an even level of like emotional um, connection between you and the child and, and, and trust and them knowing that they can count on you for everything and anything and that if they need you, you're going to be there and you're not going to kick them out of the house or disown them or anything like that. So those are my, those are my thoughts. And that's basically what I have on it. So it really depends on the type of parenting. And like I said, this starts from like this style of parenting and this type of relationship in order to get to this point, to be able to do everything that I just like advised everyone to do has to start from when they're little. Like it can't just be like, okay, well now that they're having sex, I'm going to try to be an authoritative parent. It doesn't work like that because you've, you've just set up their entire expectation of you as a parent by their entire life up to this point. So those are my thoughts, and I know that it's a little bit passionate, but anything involving children and raising children, I am super, super, super passionate about. And it irritates me beyond all means seeing parents not doing, like, parents know that giving their kids everything in the world is not the way to parent. Like, they're not stupid. They know mm, there's probably a more effective way to parent my kid. And, and the same thing goes with parents who are just so little, they show such little outward love to their children, and it's just like, I expect you to do this, and this, and this, and this, and some of those kids, like, refer to their dad as, like, sir. So, I, I'm just, I'm really passionate about topics involving children. So, anyway, without further ado, and without going on any more on this tangent, I will let you all go, and I hope you have a fantastic week. I love you all so much, and blessed be.